G'day, I'm Jake. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the entire 12 volt electronic system for my VW T5 camper van. For some context, what this system ended up powering included four LED downlights, multiple USB charging ports for phones, a standing diesel heater, 12 volt compressor fridge, submersible water pump, and a Max Air roof fan. Also, I had a house plug, which is in Australia 240 volt, I think it's 210 in Europe, to be able to plug in my laptop and charge that as well. After months on the road with this system I can happily say that it does all work really well. The only thing that could put the system under a little bit of stress is charging a laptop a couple of times without moving or without a lot of sun. But that didn't happen too often and it is a very compact system so that's a compromise I was happy with. As you can see here beside me this is the engine room of the electronic system with the battery underneath the passenger seat down there and I've also got here my original sketch up of the electronic system including all of the wire gauges, how thick all of the wires would be, as well as how large all of the fuses and circuit breakers needed to be. So feel free to pause that if you want to have a look at any of the specific numbers, but I'll run through everything now. The heart of the system is a 100 amp hour lithium ion battery from Renergy. That's charged from a 175 watt Renergy solar panel, as well as from the alternator of my starter battery in the car. Both of those are controlled through the MPPT and DC to DC charger, also from Renergy. That's a two-in-one battery charging system. Usually you have to have a solar charge controller and a DC DC charger to charge your battery with your alternator and solar. But this unit from Renergy does both in one, which is really handy. Once the power has made it into the battery, it then runs to the 12 volt fuse box, running out to all of the lights, fridge, max air fan, all of those things, and also to the inverter to the house plug. So that's the overview of the system. Now I'll dive into the specifics of what cable sizes I use, what fuse sizes, circuit breakers, and all of that. Running from the solar panel, I just have the standard solar cables that come with the solar panel, and I bought some extensions to run that into the van. On the positive line, I have a kill switch to be able to stop power from running from the solar panel into my system if you need to work on it, and it's just a good safety feature to have. Looking at the other side of the battery charger is charging with the car's old alternator. So what that actually means is connecting your car's starter battery to your leisure battery charger. I started here with a 45 amp fuse on the positive terminal of the car's starter battery and ran a 16 millimeter squared cable, which is six gauge AWG cable to my battery charger. From the battery charger, I then ran a 10 millimeter squared cable, which translates to an eight gauge cable to my leisure battery. On that positive line, I included a 40 amp circuit breaker. You'll notice that in most cases here, I've used circuit breakers instead of fuses because that also acts as kind of a switch that you can turn on and off to if you wanna perform maintenance or check anything with your system. And also if it does flick, you're able to turn it back on again rather than having to get a new fuse. From the leisure battery to the fuse box, there is a six millimeter squared positive and negative cable, which converts to a 10 wire gauge thickness. On the positive, there is a 15 amp circuit breaker as well. For this connection in particular, I loved that it was a circuit breaker instead of a fuse because it's quite common to want to be able to turn off all of the 12 volt appliances for example if you're not going to be in the car for a couple of weeks or something it's really handy to be able to just turn off that 12 volt fuse box in one go next there is a massive 35 millimeter squared which is a two cable gauge positive and negative cable running from the leisure battery to the dc ac inverter on the positive for that connection, there is a 150 amp fuse, which came with the inverter. And finally, looking back over at the 12 volt fuse box, there is a combination of 1.5 millimeter squared and 2.5 millimeter squared cables, positive and negative, running out to all of the appliances, the lights, USB switches, fans, Dandheizung, uh, standing heater, everything else in the van. All of those cables have an assortment of different fuses that you can see in the 12 volt fuse box. The way that I sized this whole system is I looked at all of the things that I wanted to power, then I looked at the technical data for each component to find out what the maximum amount of power it could draw in a day is, and added that all together. Once I did that, I found that without charging the laptop, the battery would last 2.8 days with everything going flat out, 
and while charging the laptop, it could last 1.4 days. I then worked out that with that amount of power being drawn, a 160 watt solar panel would need about 4.6 hours of full sunlight to recharge the battery. Bear in mind the sizes of all the fuses and circuit breakers in this system were sized to protect the cable that they were associated with, not any of the appliances. So the process of sizing the fuses was just a matter of seeing what was being powered, how much energy that needed to draw, then looking online to see what cable thickness was needed to service that much power, then using that same chart to look at what the maximum amount of current that that cable could hold was, and choosing a fuse or circuit breaker under that maximum amount. Before I end this, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the Renergy 2-in-1 battery charger because it's a really, really important part of this whole setup. First of all, I picked it because I really like the idea of the simplicity, having both of my charging components going through one device. It just made things a lot neater and easier to put together and understand, I found. I liked it because it is an MPPT. It's not just a solar charge controller. An MPPT is able to better capture the energy that's coming in from your solar panel and charge with more effectiveness. So you're getting like 10 to 15% more energy for the same amount of sun. Secondly, the fact that your solar charge controller is connected to your alternator is really handy as well because if your leisure battery is full, your battery charger will detect that and start to trickle feed power from your solar panel into your car's starter battery. It actually stops the power from running the other way so your leisure system can never draw power from your starter battery, but if your leisure system is full, you can charge your car's starter battery, which is kind of cool. So that's it for the 12 volt electronic system in the VW T5. I was really happy with that system. It's super user friendly and it really got the job done. I was super stoked with how that panned out. And actually now that I'm back in Australia in my Toyota Hiace, I'm putting almost an identical power system into that. So that just shows that it really did work. It got the job done and I was super happy with it. I loved learning about all of this stuff. It's really, really fascinating and so rewarding to get into. So if you have any questions, absolutely ask away. I would love to be able to answer any that I can. Thanks for watching.